Hi guys, Master Sending here. How are you all doing? I hope you're having a great week. So, today I am going to react to the new Netflix film, Pichu. Enjoy. So, Pichu is about a two-year-old girl whose mother passes away, um, leaving her all alone in their apartment. Um, the film focuses on what a two-year-old could get up to without any parental guidance around to uh, ensure that they don't, you know, get into danger or mess about or stuff. Now, this film focuses um, on the parents' fear of what could happen if a child is left on their own. Now, myself, I have four children, one of them being free, and I know what she can get up to, even with me in the house. I would dread to think what she would do if I left her alone for a few hours. I would dread to think, probably eat all the food in the cupboards and the fridge. Um, but anyway, guys, so, Let's, uh, let's check out this trailer. It's got some really raving reviews. A lot of uh, things on social media is talking about how uh, how it's driving fear into parents across the world. I have watched a couple of reaction videos on this, just to get an idea. Um, now, it did cross me uh, a little bit that a lot of the people reviewing them were kids they don't they didn't have children of their own which isn't to say they don't understand the concept of the film but for myself having four children um yeah this film looks quite terrifying to be honest it's gonna really drive any parents out there mind you know you know sort of just the imagination of their mind to drive it a bit wild plus um yeah, there is one thing I think all parents fear is something happened to you and your child will struggle to defend for themselves or get help. So, all in all, it's a very interesting concept. Now, it is based on a true story. So, that being said, let's crack on. Let's watch it. A little bit of uh, interesting facts about this film. So, it was directed by... I may not pronounce this right, and I apologise if I don't, um, but Capri Finod, I believe. Um, now, my understanding is it's quite a low-budget film, um, and uh, his idea was literally they would not direct. This child would literally direct them. She would create the movie for them. So what they've done is they set up uh, numerous different cameras because they could only get the one shot. Uh, the little girl would uh, work sometimes five hours at a time, but would sleep through three of them. So they didn't have a lot of time to uh, to do the footage um, and the recordings. And they would obviously, the little girl needed time off. She is only two. Um, he intentionally made sure that the filming started before she turned three. So it was true to life. Um, and he literally, they, they were there to supervise, but they just let her get on with it, recorded. And I think it's brilliant. Um, so what you're seeing in the film is not directed at all. It is not, how do I word this? It is not scripted. They might have had some concepts of what they wanted, but they literally let this two-year-old run wild and do what she does. And um, apparently what they, uh, they got out of it is meant to be pretty good. Here we go. Reacting to the Netflix official trailer for Pihu directed by Finoff Capri Oh very creepy music Oh meet two year old Pihu She is sweet mm -hmm. Adorable, yep, definitely. <laughs> Innocent. Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing in the fridge? And all alone. Oh, she's stuck. You can die of suffocation if you get trapped in the fridge because sometimes the airtight 
stops you from pushing it open again based on a true story. doesn't realise her mum's died. Ooh. Her phone was ringing. Oh. Oh, she spilled the milk. Whoa. Oh, no. How does she know how to use a microwave? Oh, she's turning on the gas rings on. She's trying to figure out how to cook her food. Oh. That's horrible. Oh. Oh. Oh, I thought she fell. Oh, I'm just gonna fall. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> oh, oh, that's uh, that's horrible. Oh my god. Oh, guys, I thought she was gonna fall at that last moment. Whew, calm yourself. So the trailer looks really good and the film looks epic. I'm definitely going to watch it myself, uh, especially being a parent. Um, that film was, it looks quite terrifying to be honest with you, just to see what your child could get up to if they were left alone too long. Um, I just dread to think really. Anyway guys, um, because this is based on a true story, I wanted to look into sort of what the film is based on what story is it based on um is it loosely based on something or is it pretty much you know sort of like for like so to speak anyway guys so this is the sort of stuff that i have found out so looking into the background story i've done a little bit of research online um a lot of people believe that the uh, the film is based on an incident that happened in new york in 2017. So police officers outside they were there to investigate monday after a 37 year old woman was found dead in her silver lane apartment her three-year-old daughter left living there alone police say for several days they found a three-year-old girl alone with her deceased mum it's believed that she had been left for three days and she survived on cereal she found on the floor east hartford police say a social worker made the discovery after the child never showed up for daycare they say the little girl was slightly dehydrated and surviving on cereal she found on the apartment floor um and she was slightly dehydrated, so she was taken to hospital. It is said that a social worker went to check on the child after she missed a day of daycare, um, which is brilliant. Um, with some of the other stories that I found out, you'll understand why that's brilliant. Um, so the little girl, absolutely fine. She uh, she recovered. People believe that the, uh, the film is based on what happened in New York. Um, I believe that it may have been an incident that happened in um, New Delhi. Sort of around the same time as the, uh, the New York incident. Um, I'll just read what it says here. So it says, Authority said Wednesday, the child's 37 year old, in a complete horrifying incident, a three-year-old girl found living with her dead mother's body for several days. Unfortunately, I can't confirm it because when you click on it, if I click on it, that happens. Um, so it's uh, unfortunately it's restricted to my country, um, and so I can't look into it further. But looking online, a lot of people also believe it was the New Delhi incident that. Um, that the film's based on i don't think we're ever gonna know however 
Looking into these two stories, trying to get an idea of what this film may be based on, it did make me realise that it doesn't matter what it's based on because this happens a crazy amount. That it is quite terrifying. Um, I've got a couple of stories here that I would like to share with you. I'm going to be totally honest um, at this point of the video. Some of the stuff that I found out is absolutely horrific and horrifying. And then, you know, please feel free to turn off this video now. Um, otherwise, stay tuned and watch what I found out. And hopefully we, as parents, could learn something from it. So this story happened in Michigan this year where a six month old baby called Skylar was found by state troopers beside a dead parent Jessica 26 and Christian 28. The uh, Michigan state troopers were asked to do a, well, a wellness check at the road way in in Whitehall in Michigan. On that breaking news we mentioned earlier. Yeah, we mentioned that two people were found dead, a six month old in critical condition, but still alive as far as we know. Our Angelina McCall is at the scene with more. Angelina. Doug Otter, we just made it out here, but we do know that this roadway and this motel right behind me in Whitehall is at the center of a death investigation happening here in Muskegon County. So some background for you, according to Michigan State Police, troopers came here to this motel because they wanted to do a welfare check. And when they showed up and when they went into the room, they found two people dead as well as that six month old child. They found a 28 year old man dead as well as a 26 year old woman, and they did find a six month old child alive. Skylar was found highly dehydrated beside the corpses of her parents. Drugs was found in the room, so was expected to be from a drug overdose. Skylar was rushed to Helen Devos Children's Hospital in Grand Rapids in Michigan. We do know that that child is in critical condition, so much so that this child was taken to the hospital and then it was life flighted to Helen DeVos's Children's Hospital for immediate uh, medical attention. Now, this all started. Skylar, only being six months, um, was believed to have um, been there for three days next to her dead parents, laying next to him. That's where the state troopers said that they found her because of this Skylar was in a very critical condition um, but she has since made a full recovery the next story I have is also from this year and also happened in Michigan a three-year-old girl found alone with a deceased mother at their house the Oakland County Sheriff said that the aunt of the 27 year old mother was trying to contact her for a few days, but after no response, decided to check on her. Discovering her niece dead and the child on her own, she contacted deputies um, and firefighters who went to the house in Pontiac and found the woman dead with several empty aerosol cans of compressed air laying around her. The officers said the 27 year old woman had a history of drug abuse. The next story I have comes from uh, Kiev in Ukraine in 2019, so May of this year. Um, this one I found absolutely heartbreaking and horrific. So a two year old child was found in Kiev, Ukraine beside her deceased parents. The child had been left alone with her parents corpses for nine days. It took the neighbours complaining of bad smells for the police to find the two-year-old Alexandra amongst syringes the parents was expected of using. The expected death um, was another overdose. Okay. 
the child obviously was extremely weak, highly dehydrated and suffered from quite bad malnutrition. The child was rushed to hospital and was expected to make a full recovery. So it, it turns out well for that child, but a horrible, horrible story. Nine days. The fact that the smell alerted the neighbours, that two-year-old was there the whole time having to deal with that, the smell of death and decay, that, that would have been so horrible. A three-year-old in Rotterdam was found um, with her deceased mother um, after three years of her dying. It took a leak leaking through to the neighbour below before it was reported. Um, they discovered the child with her mother. It's believed that the leak was caused by the child um, trying to get a drink and left the tap open and so it caused a flood, which was lucky for the child. The last story I would like to share, a little bit closer to home, um, this happened in Plymouth in Devonshire, um, a three-year-old toddler was found with her mum's deceased body and was believed to have been alone for three days. The mum's death was not treated as suspicious um, and the three-year-old was found in their flat. Um, I'm, I live in Cornwall myself so it is literally probably about 20 miles away from me so it's, that one's very close to home. These are horrific stories but one thing they all have in common is the luck how the child was discovered. Um, you would suggest a child going that long without food and water wouldn't survive too much longer. I mean it's amazing the case of the, uh, the, the, the six month old being found, uh, left with the, the, her deceased parents for a week survived that um, surprised that she survived same with the other child who was left for nine days that's a very long time but unfortunately the last story I'm gonna share which broke my heart they are not all as lucky as the last stories so the next story I'm gonna share happened in Hackney in London in 2017 it's about a four-year-old boy called Chadrak. Um, his mother died of an epileptic fit. It is believed that Chadrak had learning difficulties and had um, a autism spectrum disorder and was left alone with his mother after her death. And because of his disorder he was unable to care for himself and do simple tasks uh, like prepare himself food or a drink. I mean, he was young as well. He was only four years old. It's believed he was left alone with his deceased mother for two weeks and eventually some, succumbing to starvation and hydration and he died. Two days later, Chadrick's body was discovered after his school reported his ongoing absence of over two weeks. The school did try to call at the house twice and um, they did try and call the uh, the parents phone but obviously there was no answer. Chadrak was found dead clinging to his very decomposed mother. The coroner has called for changes on how schools respond to absence saying if they reported it sooner Chadrak would still be alive. The reason this story is so sad, firstly two weeks for a four year old not being able to cook and, and or, or prepare food or get a drink due to his um, disorder. But for me the saddest thing was they found him two days after they believed that he passed away. He was found clinging to his mother's decomposed body and he obviously didn't know what was happening the fact that two days later they found him dead it just took the call the school to report it a week after he was not at school for him to be saved and he would still be alive today 
that story really touched at my heart. It is a very horrific story. And guys, I'm so sorry for sharing all of these stories. But once I started finding them online, I wanted people to understand how common this is. And so we need to do something for our children in case it happens to us. My suggestion would be something as simple as if you know someone who's a single parent or even a couple, but one of the parents go away on work outings or, or something like that or trips, just be a good neighbor, be a good friend, be a good family member and check up on them every now and then. You know, calling them every couple of days, not getting a response and then going around there to check for yourself could be the matter of life or death for a child. Another idea is have a, in case of emergency, contact number right at the top of your phone book in your phone. Teach your child how to access that number. Have it as a neighbour or a close friend or a family member, but someone who's close by who if that child calls, even if they just dial the number um, and don't talk, that that person can go round there and just check that everything's all right. It might be a prank phone call, but you never know. And it's best to be safe than sorry. There's no going back. I used to work in care. And for me, one of the key things I learned was safeguarding and one of the main things we were taught that if we feel something's not right or something seems suspicious or off report it do what you can report it if you're wrong okay that's your pride damage a little bit but there's no harm done really not in the long term however if you don't report these suspicions and something bad does come from it You've got to live with that for the rest of your life. And I wasn't prepared to do that. So if I noticed something a little bit off, a little bit suspicious or strange with the people I was caring for or even their family members, I would report it at least to the head nurse or, or the, uh, the care homes management just because I couldn't live with myself if I thought something was going on and it really was. I mean, being a father myself, I would hate to think if something happened to me, what my children would be doing, how they would be surviving and how long they would be left. I mean, I, I just couldn't fathom them trying to survive for a week, nine days, three days, a couple of hours. I mean, especially my youngest, she's free. And she wouldn't understand what was happening. So take heed of what I have shown. And, you know, just let's take care of each other. So guys, sorry about that video. It's not as funny. It's not upbeat like all my other videos. Um, but... As I mentioned, after doing the reaction video to Pihu and looking at the true story behind it and finding how common and frequent this happens. I mean, these are just stories I found over the sort of the past three years. But if you go online, there's loads and they go further back and there are many, many cases. So, guys, let's just take care of each other look out for one another and if someone has young children and you know that they may need a little bit of additional help help them just be there for them support them you know it could mean a lot to someone it really could anyway guys once again thank you for watching my video i am sorry how sad this video may have been and i'm sorry if um any of you was troubled by anything that i've spoke about or shown in this but these are not exaggerated they are not made up these are true stories and i wanted to share what's happening out there right under our noses it could be our neighbor you know anyway guys as always take care of yourself and i will see you all soon bye